Hi guys, I'm Tony G. I'm going to help teach you guys how to play uh, Jonathan Colton's First of May, considering today is the day. So, first of all, I apologize because I'm actually half-stepped down, so I'm using a capo on the first. However, um, pretty much the whole song is in the first position, so you never really have to change. Um, and there are two chords that are really your bread and butter here. So those, the first chord is going to be this G, and he plays it a wacky kind of G. So what he does is he has his finger on the th his ring finger on the third fret of the E string, the low E string, and his pinky finger on the third fret of the high E string, and he uses his ring finger here to mute the A string. I don't know if you can see it too clearly, but so it's basically just an open G chord like that. So you could essentially play the same chord. You could use your middle finger or you could, if you're just playing like the same. Um, kind of three finger G chord, you could play it like this. But due to the changes that he makes, it's just a lot more, it's just a lot easier for him to just go ahead and play an open G like that with two fingers. So now, a big thing that he does, this is his bread and butter right here of the whole song, is he does a G and he keeps the G while he adds in the notes for a C, which is here, the first fret of the B string, which is a C, and then here, the second note of the D string, which is an E. So, he's gonna go ahead and play this G. And he's gonna go ahead and hammer on and do a couple a couple strums with the added C chord into it, but he never changes his ring and his pinky finger here. So. So now we're going to take a look at the first verse. So he uses this chord right at the very beginning of the first verse. So this is the strumming pattern for the first verse. So. So right there, before he switches over to the C, he's just going to be doing that G to G with the added C notes in it too. So. So this is a really, really cool um, ascension that he does. I guess descension would be the word for it. But he's going to go ahead and start with a regular open C chord. So I just use my thumb up here to mute the low E string because it's not needed. So he plays this open C. And then when he goes on to the next one, he'll take his middle finger off the second fret, off that E from the D string, and he'll put it onto the B, which is the second fret of the A string. So now we're looking at a, a chord like this. My first finger down here and my ring finger, well, excuse me, middle finger down here. Sounds kind of odd, I know. And then he's just going to take his middle finger and he's going to put it back onto that D string on the second fret still. So these are all just strumming the, the bottom five strings. So it's just going to be the A, the D, the G, the B, and the E string. So it sounds like this. So let's see here. <coughs> so we got this here. I will So at this point, uh, my guitar sounds out of tune. Yeah, I'll fix it in a minute. Anyway, so at this point, he does the, the descending, and then back to a regular C, and then he jumps up to a D with the sus4. So it's just adding your pinky onto the third fret of the high E string. All right, so let's go ahead and do that whole part there really quick. Not too bad, right? Alright, now let's go on to the second half of this verse, which is actually going to be very, very similar, except for the very end. So then it says, I'm sick of tired of winter, and I wish that it was spring. And then a little full of the bright red eyes began to see. So here it is, this E flat diminished, or I guess it's just a regular E diminished chord. No, it is E flat diminished. It's a really weird chord. So you're going to... Uh, let's see here. So you're going to have your pinky finger on the second fret of the high E string, and then your middle finger is going to go on the first fret of the B string, and then your ring finger is going to go on the second fret of the G, and then your pointer finger is going to go onto the first fret of the D string. And I guess theoretically you only have to strum the bottom four. Excellent. 
So that so that part, you know, is the exact same thing. We're doing this descending C back to regular C to D, and then we go to that E flat diminished. to that in the next part. Alright, so the next part we have is this little pre-chorus that he does every time before he goes into the chorus. So like I mentioned from the last time, we're going into that E, e flat diminished, right into the E minor. So, the last part is this here. C, D to the E flat diminished, and he goes to the E minor like this. That's easy, that was just an E minor to an A minor switch. So this one's incorporating two more chords on top of the E minor and the A minor. So we're going to have the E minor to the A minor to the D. He actually throws this one to the sus four, the sustained four, or suspended four, excuse me, with the pinky on that third fret on the high E string, and then he jumps into this cool C nine, which is like a really cool jazzy chord, which is going to be third fret on the A string, which is your C, and then second fret on your D string, which is your E, and then you're just going to bar the third fret on the bottom three strings on your G, your B, and your E strings. So, and you're only going to strum the bottom five, so it's going to sound like this. Excuse me. The cool thing with this chord is that you can use it for your own personal use at any time. It's like a bar chord, you can move it up anywhere. Get that real jazzy feel. Anyway, so this so we're gonna go ahead and play that part again slow. So he's starting off with the E minor. Ooh, child, what you think you're gonna do? Drumming pattern is one, two, it's a triplet, so. Right into that G chord that we started playing in the beginning. And that's going to be your chorus, which we'll cover in the next part. Alright, so now we've made it to the chorus. Great. This is the best part of all, and of course, the filthiest part of all, which is my favorite. Anyway, so he's going to be doing a lot of that G and the C, adding the notes again. And we're also going to see the D chord come into play. And we're also going to see this whole drop, the descending C. So make sure those are all in your arsenal. We're also going to see this kind of weird chord that's a G7. So technically you could play it like... But the way that he plays it is instead of getting the F down here on the, uh, on the high E string, he's actually going to play the F here on the D string. So basically... seven that way. So basically that G7 chord, you're going to have your open G chord, still muting the A string, and then you're going to actually throw your middle finger, this is kind of a hard switch, um, it's going to actually slide up from the second fret on the D string to the third fret on the D string. So it's going to, it's going to look like this, and then you're, we're going to go into the C with the G, and then we're going to slide in that middle finger and release our pointer finger. Kind of a weird chord, and I made a weird face, but whatever. It's a weird chord. It deserves a weird face. So here's the chorus right here. So it goes. Cause it's the first of me. So let's break that part down there. So the first part is going to be the easy part. Because it's the first of May, first of May, outdoor free starts to be. So it's just going to be your G adding into your C. And then he goes to the next line. It's just a straight D chord. So bring your favorite lady. And then the next line is going to be using the descending, but it's going to be a little bit of a tempo change. Not a tempo change, I guess an actual rhythmic change. So... Or at least your favorite 
Unless you're at least your favorite lane. So this one he's gonna go pretty quick. Boom, 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 G chord. So we have boom, 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 boom. Kinda sounds like a church song. Anyway, so we're gonna have that C descending. So this line is probably the most complicated line of the whole song right here. So I'll go ahead and run you through it really quick. So we have the D. So bring your favorite lady. Or at least your favorite lady. So see how a lot of quick changes. So bring your favorite lady. Or at least your favorite lady. So I'll play that part for you fast. So bring your favorite so it's a bit of a change. It might take you a little bit to get used to it. And then the next part is pretty easy. It just goes into a C. Let's hear it with grass. Uh, let's hear it. The water's not cold, baby, dip in your pinto. Maybe I'll see you in the grande de lento. With grass below you and sky above. So that one's easy. C, G, D, G, C, G. Not too bad. And then the very last line is going to be an A minor, an E minor, then a C, and they're all only strummed once. And then we're going to hit a C7, which is just like a C chord, but you throw your pinky down here on the third fret of the G string. Right here. And you're going to hold it. So that last part is, and celebrate spring with the crazy little thing called a fucking outside. Basically right back into the intro right there with the G to the adding C. Well, that should cover all the parts because the chorus is the same every time and all of the verses actually follow the exact same pattern. So I hope this wasn't too long and boring. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys like it, give me some feedback. If you hate it, I don't give a shit.